check this out. The northern lights are visible in some parts of the country tonight. These pictures were taken in Chattanooga, Tennessee this evening, shared by family members of one of our producers. I'm going to guess Jake. The lights may well, be seen in parts of Northern California, so you might not have to go to the country music capital of the country. Now the bad news, though. This is part of a rare and powerful geomagnetic solar system that could disrupt cell phone networks, GPS satellites, Internet service, power grids. Oh, baby. This follows a series of solar flares on the sun that blasted at least five massive streams of plasma toward the Earth. Space weather forecasters have issued a severe G4 geomagnetic storm watch for tonight and they say that could last all weekend. Earlier today we caught a glimpse of the sunspots that could cause this geomagnetic storm and to help explain this we're talking with Sushant Mahjan, a solar astrophysicist at Stanford. Uh, good evening, thanks for being with us. We also have uh, our chief meteorologist Lawrence Carno uh, with us by the way Sushant. So, just first of all, I'll, I'll ask the basic question. Can you explain what's going on tonight uh, to a kindergartner? What, what exactly are we talking about here? Well, it, it, okay. Uh, for a kindergartner, uh, they probably know about atomic bombs, right? Yes. Or any kind of bombs. So um, what has happened on the sun is a bunch of uh, sunspots, which have a lot of magnetic energy in them, have released some of that magnetic energy in uh, explosions that are of the order of a million atomic bombs going off in a few seconds. And those sort of flares that uh, one that we can see on uh, your screen right now, one of the, a uh, few of those solar uh, flares also kind of burped out a little bit of plasma, which is very hot and magnetized material towards the earth. And when that material came towards the earth, those charged particles kind of got trapped in the Earth's magnetic field and went towards the Earth's north and south poles, where they smashed into the air we have in the Earth's atmosphere and excited oxygen and nitrogen in the Earth's atmosphere. And when that oxygen and nitrogen tries to relax back down by releasing that excess energy, it emits green and red light, which is what causes the aurora that we're seeing uh, throughout the country today. Sushant, that is really just a, a just an amazing phenomenon. If you get a chance to see it uh, in person, I've heard it's uh, nothing less than spectacular. Now, I understand this is a series of events. This is a series of coronal mass ejections that have occurred. And I understand that they come out at different speeds leaving when they leave the sun, and they can actually start to cannibalize each other. Can you explain that? Yeah, so... Um, we, we, the space between the sun and the earth is usually crowded a little bit. Uh, it's not exactly vacuum, but it's crowded by some particles coming from the sun, which are like constantly coming. It's called the solar wind. And so when a coronal mass ejection happens, when, when the sun sends out this first burp, that first burp, a lot of its energy goes into clearing out the field, clearing out these wind particles that are in its way because it's traveling way faster than uh, the, the solar wind of the sun. And so the first eruption is usually travels to a slower, but then the one behind it, w which happens a few minutes or a few hours later, it doesn't have to spend a lot of energy moving things around that are in its path, right? It gets a clear path. And so it travels faster and the successive eruption after that travels even faster and then they start to cannibalize each other, kind of coalesce, because they, the, the eruptions coming later are traveling faster. And I, under and I understand when they, when, they, when they combine, they become much, much larger in size. How would that impact the, uh, uh, the Earth when they're that much larger? Yeah, when, when they become much larger in size, that, that means you get many more charged particles coming towards the Earth. And so normally, if you get one eruption, um, like this coming towards the Earth, you'll see aurora limited to very uh, regions very close to the north and very close to the south poles. But because now you have many more charged particles coming in due to these combined eruptions, aurora start to become visible uh, even at low latitudes, as low as Alabama tonight. 
Wow. And how about us here in the Bay Area? Um, when is the best time to try to get a glimpse? I understand this, this is pretty rare, hasn't happened, I read somewhere in about 20 years. Yeah, the last, uh, by, by the way, the storm is G5 class now. Uh, the last G5 class was, uh, storm was back in uh, around Halloween in 2003. So we've not had one of these in 21 years. If you're in the Bay Area, um, the first thing you should look up is weather in your area. Whenever there's the lowest chance of clouds tonight, uh, you can go out and make sure you go to an area where you have a clear field of view. You can see as far north as you can. And um, if you have a cell phone, nowadays all cell phones have a pro mode in their camera. You can switch your cell phone camera to pro mode and adjust the exposure of the photographs that you take to be a few seconds, up to 30 seconds. Mm. If you expose a camera up to 30 seconds, pointing it north tonight, you might be able to capture some of these auroras. That's good advice. And real quick, we're out of time, but do you think people around here might lose internet, cell service, GPS? Do you think that'll be affected? It, it is unlikely that we would all lose internet, uh, but some parts, there might be some voltage fluctuations. Um, GPS could uh, be a little inaccurate tonight. So. Okay, well... So uh, it won't be too bad, but we might see some sporadic issues. Uh, that is Sushant Majan, a solar astrophysicist with Stanford University. Appreciate your time. Appreciate you explaining that to us. Have a good night.